Hello, this is Solar PV TV from EU PVSEC 2016 from München. We are together with a guest from far, 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 far away with Professor Martin Green, father of the solar cells. Uh, hello, Martin. Hello, Thomas. So, Martin, what brings you from so far, far, far away to EU PVSEC actually? I guess it's, uh, this has always been an important uh, conference. So, um, I, I've uh, traditionally uh, given the opening talk for this conference, so I guess as long as they continue to offer me that spot, I'll probably keep coming. Can you tell us more about um, your achievements, about uh, the achievements of your uh, institute? Yes, we, we've had a good year so far, so we uh, claimed uh, three records so far this year. But um, we're working on a wide, wide range of technologies. We're quite a large um, university-based uh, research group. So we now have about 125 PhD students. So quite a lot of different projects underway. But one of the projects is dealing with copper, zinc, tin, sulfide solar cells, which is a earth abundant uh, technology that uh, many other people are working on. Mm -hmm. But uh, we claimed a record for the first cell that was one centimetre squared, which is the standard test size, uh, and that was about an 8% efficient cell. Um, so that technology is in its very early stages, but I can re remember back when both cadmium telluride and uh, CIGS technologies were at similar efficiency levels and it just took a lot of hard work to get them up to the 22% level where they now are. So we're hoping it's a similar story for the copper, zinc, tin, sulphide materials. And uh, do you have any cooperation with uh, European institutes, uh, with European organisations? We've had a lot of co cooperation over the years, so we've had many researchers from Germany in particular visit us over the years, and uh, some have stayed in Australia, some have gone back home. But um, uh, I was lucky enough to win a Humboldt Fellowship in uh, about uh, 10, 15 years ago, so that involved spending a lot of time in Germany, so established a lot of good links with German researchers as a result of that program, and we've had several Humboldt Fellows visit us and stay within our group and and at least one of those uh, has stayed on with us. And what do you think, uh, Martin, you know, like for, um, taking into account your experience and also uh, a lot of achievements in the in the solar energy, how do you feel about the European research, about uh, the European institutes? Do you think that uh, Europe can be and can retain its uh, leadership position in the solar industry and research, of course? Yeah, you know, Europe's played a very important role in the development of the industry. So there's a number of very strong research institutes uh, throughout Europe. Um, but I think the major contribution to photovoltaics may have been the German feed-in tariff program, which really was uh, responsible for getting the industry to the stage that it's out now, at now. Like, uh, without that program, I think the uh, we wouldn't be looking at the very low costs we're seeing for solar photovoltaics uh, at the present point in time. You recently wrote a book about the Chinese industry. So I'm sure you were observing the fact that um, actually people a bit forgot about new technologies. They mainly focused, the industry focused mainly on the scaling up and uh, getting the cheapest price uh, possible. Do you notice that uh, it is changing slightly right well, I now? I think uh, Chinese uh, manufacturers have always been quite adventurous. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think it's the fact they decided to concentrate on established technology. So I was very closely involved with the f founding of the first uh, manufacturers in China. In fact, people from our research group actually started um, you know, three or four of the early companies, um, earliest companies to begin manufacturing there. And um, they have been quite adventurous in terms of introducing new technology onto the market. I think much more adventurous than the industry was prior to its recent growth. So uh, I think they concentrated on silicon technology originally, but they did a lot of exploration of thin film technology, but it just turned out they were able to get the cost of the, the silicon mainstream oil. silicon technology. They were able to get the cost out of that very, to take it to much lower levels than anyone had anticipated was uh, feasible. So now you think that uh, they will put more attention to the new technologies and next, um, next generation technologies? Yeah, well, I think I think they already have uh, done their share of introducing new technology. So the the perk cell technology that was originally developed in my group uh, is now being commercialised, but that was 
spearheaded in Taiwan rather than mainland China, but the um, the Chinese industry is now adopting that technology um, um, sort of across the board, and um, I think there. I don't think again that the early that the adoption of that technology would have occurred without the low with the out the reduction in costs that have occurred as a result of the manufacturing shifting to China. So you were mentioning that your Europe and especially Germany with feed-in tariff system was, let's say, gave the kick off of the of the whole industry in the world. Now in Europe, as you'll notice, we have um, a bit of issue uh, with the market. The market slowed down, and we are speaking about let's say, new wave of uh, PV develop development, uh, especially with the storage solutions, integrating uh, uh, solar into the whole energy and transportation solution. How do you see the future of solar, let's say, taking into account your experience and also, you know, your, your vision? Yeah, it's, um, it, well, it's becoming a worldwide industry and I think Europe has, still has plenty to con contribute. So there's um, many new technologies still required. Uh, but Europe has played a very active role in the equipment development side of the industry. So um, most of the manufacturing um, activity in China was based on the use of European uh, equipment. So uh, you, you know, although the development of the industry in China made it difficult for German manufacturers of cells to compete on the international market, uh, that was not the case with the equipment. So um, there was um, many billions of dollars worth of German and other European equipment sold uh, into China as the manufacturing industry there developed. I think that aspect is often overlooked and it's always seen as a one-sided uh, sort of transition. But actually the, the build-up of the industry in China was very beneficial to European equipment manufacturers. Exactly. And uh, you were mentioning, Martin, that uh, you are coming since a lot of years. Uh, for the opening speeches at EU PVSEC. And uh, what do you think about um, this conference? Like, you know, what is special about it that you're always coming here? Yeah, I, I guess it's changed over the years. So I came to the very first conference in this series back in 1977. And, wow. and um, you know, in that era, they were, uh, the conference was the second largest in the world, I guess, because the the IEEE conference, the US-based conference, was the premier conference. And then during the 80s, as the um, European um, governments concentrated more on the development of solar energy, the transition occurred and this became by far the largest conference and a, a massive exhibition that accompanied it. And now we've evolved uh, past that stage and uh, we're, I think we're entering a new era with this conference. But uh, rather than... Um, the emphasis on uh, equipment and the industrial side of things, I think it's reverting back to a more academic conference was where it originally began. So I assume that uh, we will meet you also next year, yes, at the UPVSEC? Yeah, I hope so. So um, I hope to uh, be here again. It often depends on the timing and that kind of thing because, as you said before, I'm a long way from home. Yeah. So it's not trivial to make a commitment to come over to Europe to attend a conference like this. but. Um, you know, this this conference looks like it's going to be a very big, a very good one. So, I, um, in all probability, I will be here next year. So, thank you so much, uh, Martin, and uh, hopefully we'll meet each other at the EU PVSEC 33rd edition next year in Europe. That was Solar PV TV together with Martin Green from far, far away from Australia, who is every year coming to EU PVSEC in Europe.